Hey everyone, it's Unsung NPC back here with another class video for Wrath of the Righteous. Today we're taking a look at the Arcanist. Arcanist, Arcanist, however you want to say it, it's the same thing. So, it's a made up word, uh, so don't feel too bad if you pronounce it wrong. <laughs> so, the Arcanist. Yeah, pretty much all magic. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this pre made build balance is pretty damn accurate. Alright, so is the four level difficulty. Um, I feel like this is one of those classes that's great to use when you've learned how to use it, and it's a little bit tricky to master because there's so many things involved that you kind of just forget about stuff that you have all the time. That's like one of the number one killers with these like more complicated cl caster classes is forgetting all of the stuff that you have. So. The key Arcanist trait here, right, is the exploits. This is the main feature of this class, okay? So, every other level you get an exploit, and the exploit can be one of these different possible selections. And then you get greater exploits later on as well, okay? And then you get Magical Supremacy at the end at level 20, which is converting your arcane reservoir into spells and back again so you can cast any spell she has that you have prepared by expending a number of points and then a level to be cast instead of expending a spell slot so you can pretty much just use your points as extra spell slots essentially what are your reservoir points good question so the arcane reservoir points where are they at where are they where are they at here we go an arcane reservoir is like your innate pool of magical energy. What an arcanist is, is a wizard that uses their innate magical power to cheat the magical system, essentially. So the amount of points you get is three plus half your level, okay? So completely unrelated to any sort of stat or anything like that, okay? And that's what you get for your arcane reservoir. Okay, it's, that's, that's what the points are. The points are used to use your exploits as well as eventually trade them in for spell slots and things like that. There's also a feat that you can take called Full Reservoir, which means that you no longer gain only three plus half your level after a rest. You instead gain three plus your level in full. So you're looking at like, you know, up to like 23 points rather than up to 13. You also get an ability called Consume Spells, so you can expend an available Arcana spell slot as a move action, making it unavailable for the rest of the day. You can use this a number of times equal to your Charisma modifier. Doing this adds points to your Reservoir, which is why level 20 ability is so important because it allows you to take those points and put them back to spell slots. Does that make sense? So level 1 you get spell slots to points level 20 you get points to spell slots okay now it uses your charisma for this as well as some of the ab abilities that you can get also take charisma like how many times you can use ability it's kind of similar to the shaman where the shaman's main spell casting is wisdom but their secondary is charisma it works the same way here your main spell casting modifier is intelligence that is what you use for spells. But all of the little arcanist things are gonna be based on your charisma, okay? So you kind of have to have that balance. On the, plus, on the plus side, if you take a background that gives you persuasion, this is a great class to have persuasion in because you're gonna to have to have charisma anyway. So there you go. Okay, proficient with simple weapons, yeah, no armor. You got your cantrips, your arcane cantrips, okay? We're going to take a look at these different exploits. So first you have Acid Jet. So Acid Jet, you expend the point and you shoot a ranged touch attack that does 1d6 points of acid plus your charisma modifier plus an additional 1d6 per two levels. So eventually you'll have 10d6 acid and then you also make the target sickened and they can fortitude save to negate the sickened. Okay, I'm gonna kind of go over what I think is worth it after I've gone over the different abilities. Arcane Barrier is a swift action where you expend a point and you gain 
temporary hit points equal to your level plus your charisma modifier that lasts for one minute per level, okay? Or until the temporary hit points are lost. So each additional time per day you use this ability, the number of arcane reservoir points you must expend to activate it increases by one to a maximum of three. But the temporary hit points do not stack, okay? So you can give yourself hit points three different times, but you cannot stack these three different times of hit points together, nor can you stack these with any other source of temporary hit points, because that's how temporary hit points work, okay? So it's kind of like giving yourself a little mini false life, all right? Armored Mask. By spending one point and taking a standard action, you grant yourself an illusion of armor, okay? So... Gains the benefits of mage armor with the caster level that's equal to your level. If the Arcanist already has mage armor, she instead gains the benefits of shield of faith. That's a pretty neat ability right there, okay? So you gain yourself mage armor. If you already have mage armor, you get shield of faith. And they, they you know, they scale with your level, which is great. Dimensional slide works like a little dimension door action. One point to create a dimensional crack that you can step forward. It uses a move action to use it, allowing you to move to any location within 30 feet that you can see. Energy shield, a standard action, expend a point, you pick an energy type, you resist 10 of that energy type for one minute per level. The protection increases by five for every five levels. So it'll be resistance 30 at 20th level, okay? Flame Arc works the exact same way as Acid Jet, except for the fact that it's fire and it's in a 30 foot line instead of a ranged touch attack. So you're gonna have those creatures take a reflex save to be able to dodge it. Okay, but they'll only dodge half the damage. Force Strike is, uh, it's kind of like a mini magic missile. So it does 1d4 plus one point per level. And it always hits, just like Magic Missile does. Holy Water Jet is the same as Flame Arc, except it does 1d8 points of damage. Creatures in the area, yeah, it's it's a 30 foot line again, but again, this only takes damage, this only deals damage to creatures that would take damage from Holy Water, which is demons, undead, like any undead or evil outsider, okay? So not regular cultists. They're not gonna take damage from holy water. Ice Missile. Okay, Ice Missile works the same way as the acid and fire and all of that. It is a ranged touch attack in 30, within 30 feet. Does cold damage instead, and they have to succeed a fort save or become staggered for a round. Lightning Lance is another one just like it, okay? It could also cause the vision to be impaired though. So, the target's vision is also impaired, causing the target to treat all creatures as if they had concealment for one round. To attempt a fortitude save to negate that impairment. Potent magic. Potent magic, you expend a point, okay? And you increase the caster level of a spell. Oh, whenever the Arcanist expends one point from her Arcane Reservoir to increase the caster level of a spell, you increase it by two instead of one and same for the DC. So that's that's another thing that Arcane Reservoir does, is just flat out every Arcanist has this. Your DC and your caster level for your spells can be increased by one by expending a point of your Arcane Reservoir. No, you cannot do this multiple times and they don't stack, okay? You can do this one time, and you can do this only on one of those two things, DC or caster level, at a time, for your spell. So potent magic allows you to take those bonuses to two. All right? Shadow Veil. An Arcanist can pull a veil of shadows around you, making it more difficult to spot and strike. You gain concealment and a plus five on stealth checks. Last for a number of rounds equal to one, plus your charisma. Sonic Blast is the same as all the others, except it's Sonic Damage and the Fortitude Save to half the damage. So it's not a ranged touch attack. It's you using it and they do a Fortitude Save. So it's kind of like a mini sound. 
It's like a mini uh, ear piercing screen, essentially. Spell resistance, you give yourself spell resistance for a number of rounds equal to your charisma modifier. And the spell resistance is equal to six plus your arcanist level, right? Swift consume allows you to use your consume spells as swift actions instead of move actions. That's just a flat thing that you get. It's just a passive ability. Wooden flesh allows you to gain, expend a point to gain two natural armor bonus to AC, DR and slashing where N is equal to your charisma modifier. Okay, so the more charisma modifier you have, the better your DR is gonna be. While this ability is in effect, you count as both the original creature type and a plant creature for the purpose of abilities and spells. That's really interesting, actually. I didn't know that was a thing. Count as a plant creature. I don't know exactly what all that affects because you're still your creature subtype as well. So it's not like you're immune to mind affecting control or anything like that. Burning flame. You can expend two points. Oh, okay, so this works at the same as Flame Arc, except you expend two points from your Arcane Reservoir instead of one. And if you do, then you can have the target catch on fire if it fails on saving throw on top of that, where they take 3d6 points of fire damage at the start of each turn until they reflex save to get out of it. Okay, so it expands on Flame Arc. Dancing Electricity probably does the same thing for Lightning Lance, yes. If she does, all creatures adjacent to the target take an amount of damage equal to half the amount of electricity damage rolled. They can take a reflex save to have that damage. And you have to have, like, Lightning Lance, Flaming Arc to be able to take these. Greater Spell Resistance is the same as Spell Resistance, except it's 11 plus the level instead of 6. Hellfire Ray is the same as flame arc except you expend two points and if you do half the damage you deal is fire and the other half is unholy power good creatures that take damage from a hellfire ray must succeed at a will save or be sickened for 1d4 rounds icy tomb is the same as ice missile except you spend two points and if you do they are coated in rhyme if they fail the saving throw as long as the ice remains one minute per level the target is entangled and takes one point of dexterity damage at the start of each turn. They can try to break out with a DC check equal to 10 plus a charisma modifier, obviously. If they take fire damage, the ice melts. And then lingering acid is the same, but it's acid and it does additional damage on rounds. 1d6 of acid on the following round for every 2d6 points of acid damage dealt by the initial attack. So whatever acid you do, half that acid dice remains, essentially, until they get out of it, if they fail the saving throw. Okay. So that's your Arcanist exploits. Um, I would say... It's always fair to specialize in an element. So if you have an element that you choose to specialize in for all your spells, and you want to be either a Ray or DC damage dealing caster, okay? Ray caster means that you're shooting ranged touch attacks. DC caster means that you're using spells that require saving throws. If you're doing either of those two things and you want to focus on elemental spells, then the corresponding element that you choose the element that you choose, the corresponding element, ability, acid, jet, flame, arc, etc., is going to be useful to you. It's an ability that you can use as long as you have the arcane points to spend. I can't recommend that enough. You should just do it. It's just a freebie little ability to just use, okay? I would take it. I would take it. it it's, a, it's a thing that can come in handy, and a lot of the damage scales as you level up. So... A nice little ability to have, but don't forget to take Ascendant Element when you do that, okay? Armored Mask. Armored Mask is pretty cool. I think it's cool to get um, Mage Armor or then Mage Armor and Shield of Faith, right? Just remember that after a certain point, Shield of Faith becomes useless if you use any Deflection Rings or... <clears throat> okay? If you use any 
uh, deflection rings or anything like that, Shield of Faith is going to conflict with that. So just make sure that you're not doing both of those things. Because if you're not going to get the Shield of Faith bonus from this, then I don't think this spell is worth it. When you could just... There are lots of potions for Mage Armor and Shield of Faith. So really this is what you use if you kind of have a free exploit to kind of throw away. <laughs> Dimensional Slide is always nice. No one wants to use one of their spells leveling up on Dimensional Door, okay? When you can just take Dimensional Slide to get yourself out of trouble. I like Dimensional Slide. I think anytime there's an little ability like this where I can teleport out of a situation, I always take it as a caster. So, if I were you, I would take it, okay? Energy Shield is okay. I mean, you're gonna have someone that has resist energy or immune to energy, communal, whatever. So you just, or protection, I mean, protection from energy. So just, I wouldn't even worry about that one. Flame Arc, Force Strike, Holy Water Jet, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Holy Water Jet's actually pretty good if you're focusing on having saving throw spells, okay? Because this is gonna have a DC of its own. And so you want to make sure that you can have them fail the saving throw. But holy water on the enemies in this game is always going to do nice damage. So that might be a nice little spell to have in case you really need it. Potent magic, always take. If you're an arcanist, you need to take potent magic. You're taking potent magic. Don't argue with me. You take potent magic right now. Okay, the main thing for Arcanists to do at the beginning is increase the levels of their spells or the DC. Just take Potent Magic and increase it further. Just do it. You want it. Alright. Shadow Veil's kinda cool if you're a stealthy Arcanist. Otherwise, the concealment isn't that much better to blur, and the blur spells are everywhere, so you don't really need it. Spell resistance, great. Greater spell resistance, great. Never have too much spell resistance. I would take whatever element you choose, take the expanded version of it as well. Duh. Okay, if you're fire, take both. Take both. Swift consume is really nice. You never know when you really need to get that consume in quickly. Swift consume is generally one of the first ones I take. I usually take swift consume and potent magic in my top three. If I'm doing elemental magic, I will take the elemental ability first as my first one, always. Just because it's a nice little ability to have, especially early game when you don't have as many spells. But these two are both really, really good to take. Wooden Flesh also seems really nice. DR and Natural Armor bonus are always great. At a certain point, that's going to be useless unless you just never have any other Natural Armor spells, which I highly doubt. But I will say that becoming a plant creature is interesting and I don't quite know how that affects the game at all to be honest because you're still your original creature type so like things that don't affect plants will still affect you because you're still part not plant I don't know what part being plant does I don't know any spells related to plants other than druid spells but maybe that's a fun one to take, especially if you're the nature mage, which we'll get into. I don't know. Now, greater exploits. Okay, greater exploits. Oh, that's what all of these are. Okay, it put them all on the list on the other list, but these are all the greater exploits. So yeah, when you can take these, take them. You're only gonna take two greater exploits, basically. One of the elemental ones, or two if you're fire and greater spell resistance because you need spell resistance so okay cool that's alchemist and it's very base it's very base okay they have high will low fortitude and reflex so they only have one high saving throw which is not great low base attack bonus but that doesn't really matter low hp okay they're spontaneous casters so how it works is you prepare the different spells that you want to cast spontaneously and then you cast those spontaneously, okay? So you don't just learn spells and then cast them like a sorcerer. You still prepare spells, but you only prepare one of each different kind of spell that you want, and then you can cast them all 
spontaneously you just have them in a pool to use okay it's a little bit tricky so i will yeah so basically what happens is i if you've already gotten the explanation from what i just said you can skip this bit and go on to the next archetype <laughs> okay if we're stuck on this here so like a wizard you put the spells into spell slots okay you put the spells into spell slots but you only do one of each different kind of spell in a spell slot you don't double up you don't put two mage armors in two different slots you only put one and now each of those spells you've put into a slot you have a limited number of spontaneous cast uses for that whole pool of spells that's how that works okay now we're gonna go through these archetypes and kind of explain what they are and what they do. First is Brown Fur Transmuter. Brown Fur Transmuter. I am a fool to admit that I didn't fully understand what this class was at first glance, okay? And I haven't played with it much in the tabletop, so that's why. So what they do is they get rid of a, they get rid of two different exploits, which isn't that big loss because you don't need this many exploits anyway. And they get rid of magical supremacy for transmutation supremacy. Okay? So, they get this ability called Powerful Change. Whenever the Brownford Transmuter casts a spell that's transmutation, okay, they can expend a point from the reservoir as a free action to bolster it. Meaning that any ability score bonuses they get from that spell increases by another two that's huge that's a whole modifier of a difference which is great okay and you can only expend one point of this at a time you can't try to double up on this and spend all your points for one giant crazy spell it's once once for each spell that you use on that's powerful now i foolishly and mistakenly thought why would i want to be a brown for transmuter when to do any self-transmutation spells, which is like most of the good transmutation spells, like you're gonna have to have some sort of foundational physical stats to make that at all useful. Like if your dex and, and strength are below 14, then even with transmuted ability score increases, it's not gonna be enough to make you powerful. It's just gonna make you back to average like every other fighting character in the game. However, there's an ability called Share Transmutation, where you can target others with transmutation spells by expending a point that have a range of personal, changing them to a range of touch. That is insane. You can take Transformation. You can take um, Aspect of Fear, right? Was that what it's, is that what it's called? Aspect of Fear? Frightful Aspect, sorry. You can take Dragon Kind, Beast Shape, all of these freaking transmutation spells and give them to other people, turning everyone in your party into different things. That's insane. This is like, this has become one of my favorite archetypes in the entire game. I love transmutation magic. I love it. I love transforming into things. I love other people transforming into things. The fact that I can make everyone turn into a freaking dragon if I wanted to is nothing short of amazing. So that's huge. That is huge. And then transmutation supremacy, where whenever you cast a transmutation spell, it's treated as if it were affected by extend spell feat without altering the casting time or slot used. Whenever you use this, Whenever she uses her powerful change ability, the bonus also increases by four instead of two. And whenever you do share transmutation ability, you can now target a willing creature within 30 feet instead of just touch. That's great. It sucks that it's all the way at level 20, and in this game, you don't have a ton of time playing at level 20, but this is awesome. This archetype is great. Arcane magic has a plethora of transmutation spells to use at your, you know, disposal i love it i can't get enough of it i want to play this class right now <laughs> and only trading a couple exploits for these abilities is insane because the exploits are just not that good in my opinion really nice next is the eldritch font 
So Eldritch Font gets Font of Power. What that does is you gain one additional spell slot for each level of Arcanist spell that you can cast. However, the number of spells that you can prepare reduces by one. Okay, so what that means is, like how I talked about you preparing spells and then having your slots for each spell level to use, what's gonna happen now is, for all your first level spells, you can cast a whole other first level spell per day. But, instead of preparing four different first level spells to choose from, you can only prepare three. That's what it's saying. It's giving you more uses, but it's giving you less versatility, okay? They also get Eldritch Surge instead of a exploit, which I, as I have said before, take away the exploits and give us better things. Base class Arcanist is not worth it. At the level you can, as a swift action, pour more power into your spells and abilities. You can add two to the cast level and DC of a spell, or increase your effective Arcanist level by two when using an Arcanist exploit. So you can increase the power of your spells and your exploits, okay? You become fatigued upon using it. If you're already fatigued, you become exhausted. If you're already exhausted, you cannot use this ability at all, so don't try. This does not stack with spending points from the Arcane Reservoir to increase the spell's caster level or DC. It does not stack, meaning you should still take potent magic, okay, because those don't exhaust you. This is going to exhaust you, so it's a nice little thing to use when you really need to, but it should not be used carelessly, okay? Next, you get Improved Surge. Now, you can, you have the ability to make two attack rolls associated with the spell and take the better result. This right here tells you all you need to know of what kind of caster you're going to be. If you can take two attack rolls and take the better result, you are now a Ray Caster. Okay, there's no other attack roll damaging spells in this game besides rays, basically. So you are now a ray caster. That's what this Eldritch font is. You are a ray caster, and that's why having more uses is better than having more spell slots, because there's less ray spells in the game. So now you're a ray caster because you take the better result of two. It's like rolling with advantage in DD 5v. Blasphemy, I know, to say that, but there it is. Greater Surge, okay, you can use your Eldritch Surge ability to force a creature to re-roll a saving throw against one spell or Arcanist exploit and take the lower value. The Eldritch Font must declare the use of this ability before the result of, that, of the creature's saving throw is revealed. If the spell or Arcanist exploit, okay, or the target, only one target is affected by this ability. Okay. So you're still a ray caster. Don't get me wrong. This is great, but you're still a ray caster. Okay? You just now have the ability to do some DC spell stuff as set as instead. The other option I guess is that you just use the attack rolls for your Arcanist exploits only, but like it's kind of a waste, especially when the Arcanist exploits aren't that good and only a couple of them even use ranged attack range touch attack rolls so but that's what that does and then bottomless well instead of supremacy which as a full round action you can refuel yourself doing so allows you to prepare new spells and regain points of arcane reservoir equal to half your level i mean that's pretty cool so you can just take a full round action and just rejuvenate yourself and get half your points back and prepare all new spells. I like that. I like that a lot. Eldritch Font is a pretty buffed up kind of spellcaster. I feel like this one is still kind of tricky to use and not necessarily specifically focused like Brown Fur tra Transmuter is, but I've heard some people talk about having good experiences with it, so. Nature Mage. Nature Mage is an Arcanist, except instead of your Arcanist spell list, you use the Druid spell list. That's the only difference. You still use Intelligence and your Charisma. You don't use Wisdom. Do not use Wisdom. But you now get Druid spells, which for some people is a big win. 
for me, Druid spells are great, but there are so many of them that I'm like, I want these spells, but I want them as a brown for a transmuter. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's cool if you don't have a nature mage and you don't plan on keeping Camellia around, then maybe this is the mood. But I, it's not my favorite, but it's kind of nice to have that flexibility if you so choose. This is your gnome archetype here, okay? So it's an arcanist by your illusion magic, essentially, okay? So you get arcane meta magic, which, which means that you, you lose an ability to increase caster level of the next spell using your arcane reservoir, but instead gain a number of powerful meta magic abilities at 5th, 11th, and 17th levels. So you can expend a point as a free action to make the next illusion spell you cast have either extend, reach, or selective as per the corresponding metamagic feat, which is huge, okay? At level 11, you can spend two points to do persistent or empowered, which are both great, okay? And if you don't know what these are, you can go to my spell feats video, and which I will put somewhere here, and you can check that out and see what there is for meta magic feats to kind of get the details on them. And then you can expend three points for maximize or four points to make it quickened. Okay. And then meta magic supremacy, all the meta magic abilities cost one less point from the arcane pool. So that's what this is. It's pretty standard, except it's meta magic for illusion spells. Okay. Unlettered arcanist. Unlettered. So unlettered gives you a familiar because instead of storing your spells in a book, you just whisper them to a familiar. Hey, you want to know my secret spells? And then your spell list instead of the regular arcana spell list is instead the witch spell list. Okay, so it's a witch arcanist. Except you don't get hexes, you still have all of your exploits. You just use a different spell list. This one I actually really like. The Witch spell list is one of my favorite spell lists, especially because Necromancy is great. The only downside is that <sighs> Necromancy, a lot of Necromancy is Fortitude, which means that they're going to have to be doing saves against Fortitude saving throws. And in this game, as I've said in the other videos, Fortitude saving throws are rough. They are rough, okay? A lot of these spells are just not gonna hit those demons the way you want them to. So if you're on a lower difficulty, I think you can swing this. If you're on a higher difficulty or core like I play, I'm sorry, but the fortitude saving throws are so rough. I have had barely any spells succeed. No matter how many feats you take, how many things you do to buff them, it's still rough. And you don't want that. You want spells that are going to be a sure thing. Otherwise, that's a wasted spell that you just used. So, not the best. And then the White Mage. I personally love the White Mage as a healer kind of option. You get spontaneous healing. So, basically what happens is you can expend a point from your Arcane Reservoir to use one of your spell slots to cast a Cure spell that matches that level of spell slot, which is great. So, and then at temp level, you can cast Breath of Life for five points, which is awesome. This doesn't work as a pure healer, really. It works more as kind of like a half healer, okay? I love filling my party with half healers. There's a great time having a dedicated healer, but if you have a bunch of half healers, then if any of them die, you still have four other, five other people that can kind of heal, and that's what I prefer. So I kind of love the white mage, but that's just me. And then you get spontaneous heal, uh, that's the level 10 thing. Yeah, so all it does is you get rid of two exploits, and now you can cast spontaneously. If you don't want to focus on transmutation, if you don't want beefed up spells, if you don't want nature magic or witch magic, and you don't want to be a gnome, Instead of taking the base Arcanist, just take White Mage. 
You're giving up literally two exploits for the sake of casting healing spells spontaneously for Arcane Reservoir points. Just do it. Just take the plunge and take White Mage instead. It is just the better base Arcanist subtype than the actual base Arcanist subtype. I am telling you for certain, just take it, okay? Do not waste your time on Arcanist. If you want something that's a little bit more empty like this, just take White Mage. Just do it. You won't regret it. Okay, here we are. So I just checked the feats, and it doesn't look like they did anything for extra Arcanist exploits or extra Reservoir. I think that they have not included that in this game, which, you know, is their business. It was nice in Call of the Wild for Kingmaker, but if they don't, they didn't include it in here, they didn't include it in here. Maybe they'll add it a different time. They have a lot of other classes that get extra this, extra that. It would have been nice to have extra reservoir points, but it's fine. But it's just not there. I searched, I searched, I could not find it. It is unfortunate, but that is the sad truth. Anyway. Anyway, this is the Arcanist. It's a pretty cool class. I really like the Arcanist. I think like just out of the arcane casters, it's just flat out better than Wizard and comparable to Witch. I really enjoy the Witch a lot. I love the Witch class, but Arcanist is kind of cool too. And I like that. I don't love having to worry about two ability scores you know, intelligence and charisma, even if charisma is kind of minor, you still have to kind of be concerned about it, but it's a cool class. I really like it. I highly recommend it if you're doing arcane casting. It's a fun one to mess around with. So it's a good class, good class. So, and oh, also to note, it's a full nine level spell caster, but you take an extra level long to get to second level spells than you do as a wizard. So just be mindful of that, all right? Just be mindful of that. It's gonna it's gonna take a little bit to, to get there for you. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm on Sung NPC. This has been the Arcanist. I hope that this has been helpful to you guys. Maybe you learned something. If there's anything you felt like that I missed or anything like that, please feel free to drop it in the comments. I don't have much to say. I know some people have been kind of requesting me to go into more Mythic Path stuff during these deep dives. I'm not going to do that because I plan on making Mythic Path videos where I will go into deep dives about which classes synergize with those Mythic Paths. Those will be coming soon-ish, okay? But for right now, this is the class itself, the Arcanist. Ascendant Element is always a recommendation for me. Abundant Casting, Improved Abundant Casting, Greater Abundant Casting, obviously. And if you're going to pick a path where you want to merge spellbooks, Lich is the one that merges arcane spellbooks. So that's the information to you. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you liked it, like and subscribe. I would appreciate it. We're almost at 420. And if you're watching this after we hit 420, then you missed it. Sad times. Um, if you want to be a part of, you know, knowing when stuff comes out or hang out at my streams or anything like that, Feel free to join the Discord. It's a fun place to be. There's a lot of people in there. We all have fun and we all have ourselves a good time. I would love to see you there. Join us. Come say hi. Hang out with us. Talk shop. It's fun times. Anyway, I'm Unsung NPC and I will catch you guys in the next one.